Hi, this is Andy Buck from edexam.com.au. Today I'm bringing you a really simple trick that you can use at work in the emergency department for your patients with epistaxis. Uh, the reason I'm making this is because I frequently see people being given the wrong advice, uh, the wrong first aid advice uh, to manage their own epistaxis, either at home, on the way into hospital in an ambulance, or on arrival in the emergency department. And what I frequently see is people being told to pinch the bridge of their nose, or the bony part of their nose, which, as we know, isn't going to do anything to stop an anterior bleed. As we all know, the commonest place people bleed from is from the nose picking spot, the spot that the tip of your finger touches on your septum if you were to stick your finger up your nose. Pinching on the bridge will do nothing to compress that. The other thing I often see people doing, or being uh, not being instructed clearly enough about, is if they're being told to pinch the correct part of the nose, which is on the soft bit of the nostrils, they will frequently let go every few minutes just to see if it's still bleeding and all that does is repeatedly dislodge the clot and make their nose keep bleeding. The way to overcome this is with a really simple technique and that is two tongue depressors and a roll of tape. So what I do when I see a patient coming into the emergency department or if I spy someone at triage with an, a nosebleed or they're getting wheeled in and on, on an ambulance trolley or I even walk past a cubicle and see someone else's patient with an epistaxis who doesn't have one of these applied I go and get the two tongue depressors and a roll of tape. If it's my patient, while well, I go over to them and say hello, I start taking a history. And while I'm talking to them, I basically grab my two tongue depressors and the tape. And about a third of the way down, I start rolling it around and taping the two tongue depressors together. So while I'm talking to them, I say, hello, how are you? Are you on, are you on blood thinning medication? Are you on Plavix? Are you on Warfarin? Have you had your nose cauterized before? Do you have ongoing nose problems, do you see an ENT surgeon regularly about anything, blah blah blah. By the time I finish taking that quick history, they're taped together and there you have it. So what it is, is essentially it's a closed peg. And what you do, you say I'm just going to pop this on your nose. And you can see it applies pressure to the exact place you want it to on the soft part of the nostrils. It's continuous pressure, the patient's not continuously letting go and squeezing, letting go and squeezing, and it's great. If it's not tight enough, just get some more tape and wrap it a bit lower. The lower you go, the tighter it gets, and I'll show you this. If you put it on there now, you can hear my voice is even higher, it's much tighter. That's not coming off. So the benefits of this are, as soon as you put it on, everyone bursts out laughing to start with, including the patient and whoever they've got with them and the nurse and the paramedic in the room. And that eases the tension a bit. Often epistaxis patients are stressed and anxious and hypertensive. This device looks ridiculous and it eases the tension a bit. The other great thing it does is then it frees up the patient's hands so they can then um, start cleaning themselves up. They can get changed out of their clothes, which are often have often got blood on them. Uh, they can get into a gown, they can have an IV put in, they can uh, have their vital signs checked and have their blood sent, have some analgesia if they need to have a sip of water, rinse their mouth out because they've got both hands free. It also allows you as the treating clinician time to go and get some equipment because you're going to need a few different things to examine their nose properly and to go sort out your other patients in the emergency department so you can buy yourself a block of clear time and uh, and when you come back to examine the patient properly and treat their epistaxis, you're not going to get interrupted. Another trick is if they're still bleeding after you put this on, one thing you can do is get two pledgets or bits of cotton wool or gauze, little squares, soak them in either straight adrenaline or lignocaine and adrenaline or cofenylcaine spray and put one up each nostril because you often can't tell which side they're bleeding from. So put those up each nostril and reapply the peg and that'll give you pressure plus a vasoconstrictor which is often quite effective in stopping anterior bleeds. It also means that when you go back to see them the septum will be blanched and it'll make the bleeding point on the septum much easier to see. One last thing that it's beneficial for is it can sometimes help you differentiate between an anterior and a posterior bleed in that if you put this on and 30 seconds or a minute later the patient is exsanguinating out of their mouth, it implies that there's a large volume of blood going posteriorly and it makes it possible that it's a posterior bleed. So there you have it, the tongue depressor nasal peg. It's a really simple trick, I want you all to start using it 
Uh, I'm going to post the video up on YouTube and on my website, which is www.edexam.com.au. If you have any useful clinical tips or tricks like this, or simple devices that you can rig up that uh, help you treat a simple clinical problem more efficiently and expedite your patient's trip through the emergency department, we'd love to hear about it. Send us an email. My contact details are on the website. Uh, and if it's any good, we'll make a video and pop it on the net. So thanks for watching and uh, use the peg. One last tip, when the patient is going home, give them a fresh peg to take with them and tell them to use it for 30 to 60 minutes should their epistaxis recur. It may save them a trip back to hospital.